Welcome back, everybody. My wife had an idea to use some reclaimed barn beams for a decorative bench in our entryway. It might look simple enough, but there are a few things to consider to make sure that it sits level and is not wobbly. Let me show you how I made it. You can do this. We sourced these beams from our friends at Architectural Savage Bank in Tarpon Springs, Florida. They've got all kinds of cool stuff, including reclaimed wood and the occasional dinosaur. There's a link to their Instagram page down in the description. I hope you check them out. These are the pieces that we settled on. We made both legs from the piece on the right, and that piece on the left was not used in this project. After loading them up, it was time to give these beams new life. First things first, I cut this piece in two for the legs. I marked some rough cut lines with a speed square and then started sawing. I cut at full depth with my circular saw on all four sides, knowing that it would not cut all the way through. It was just cut, rotate, and repeat. After that, it was back to the bench to finish the cut by hand with a Ryoba saw. With this method, the cuts from the circular saw are rarely perfectly aligned, especially on an irregular piece like this. The blade of the Ryoba was getting pinched and distorted, which made it really hard to pull through the wood. I tried waxing the blade, and this made a huge difference. I knew the wax would help a little bit, but I was shocked at how much it actually helped. I will definitely be using this technique again. I trimmed the horizontal piece to length with the same method, except I got to use my homemade dead blow mallet to clear some of the waste. These beams are really heavy, and I knew there was no way I could manipulate it myself when it comes to doing test fits and assembly, so I decided to build the whole thing upside down on some sawhorses. Now, if you look at these shots from the intro, you can see that I got the finished piece straight and level. When furniture is level and square, no one notices that it's level. But if it's not level, that will be the first detail that catches your eye. These beams are anything but flat, square, or true. So how did I build it upside down and get it level? One step at a time. After deciding which faces would be the front and the top, I marked and labeled them with some blue tape. With the horizontal beam upside down, I checked for level lengthwise and widthwise on what will ultimately be the top surface. I used some shims to make sure it was sitting true on the sawhorses. The surfaces were really irregular as you can see, so I just took several readings and got it generally level across the whole piece. Next, for this bench to be stable, I had to use the router to make some flat surfaces where the legs and beams would join. These flat surfaces would need to be level too, so how did I do that? For starters, I taped off the area to be routed. This won't be seen in the finished product, so I did not do any precise measuring here. Next, I drove in a bunch of screws and left the head slightly above the surface. Then I adjusted the height of each one so they were all exactly level. I'm using this scrap piece of particle board to check. If the particle board doesn't wobble and the level's bubble is in the middle, then all the screw heads are level. You probably figured this out by now, but the process is to let the router ride along the screw heads as it routes away the material. It's the same concept as those big slab flattening jigs people use on live edge tables. After several passes with the router, I had a flat surface that was also level relative to the top of the bench. You can see that I did not route through the front edge because I did not want to see this routed section on the final piece. There will be a matching rabbit on the leg. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Now I had to make the mating surface on the leg flat as well. I elected to use a chisel for this and quickly realized that that was going to take forever. I decided to work smarter and not harder, so I used a similar concept of what I just did on the horizontal beam. I did that by first adding some guide blocks to two of the sides. The nice thing about using salvage lumber is that adding a bunch of visible screw holes doesn't really matter. They just blend in with the rest of the defects. After the guide blocks were in place, I took it to my makeshift router table and started milling. This actually worked quite well. It was a little scary at first because the workpiece was so heavy, and I don't like pushing around a big piece like this when I can't see the spinning blades of death. However, once again, after several passes, I ended up with a flat surface. While removing the guide blocks, one of the screw heads broke off. I guess that's what I get for not pre-drilling and using drywall screws. Oh well, that just adds more character, right? So after all that, I had a leg that would fit securely and make a stable joint. There's that charming bit of character I just added. I still had the other leg to do, but instead of carrying it to the router table, I decided to work smarterer and not harderer by bringing the router to the workpiece. This worked even better because I had a lot more control and it was much safer because I could see the router bit the whole time. It did make a ton of dust though. 
So now we have one side of the leg trued up, but how do we get the other side flat but also parallel so the whole thing stays level and the legs rest flat on the floor? I've repeated the same process on the opposite side, but this time I measured off the new flat surface. If I place the guide block so that each edge is the same distance from the other surface, then that guide block will be parallel to the already milled surface. The opposing block needs to be attached the same way with the same measurements. And then it's just more of this. I think I grit my teeth when I use my router. My cheeks feel all worked over when I'm done routing something. Now that both legs had flat and parallel ends, I could put them both in place and see if they were level. Remember the horizontal beam is still shimmed and level on the sawhorses. So if I can make a straight edge sit level across the legs, then the whole piece should sit level once it's right side up. Once I knew which leg needed a little more routing, it was back to this. I decided to use dowels to join the legs to the beam, so I made this plywood template and drilled some holes. So how do I get the same hole pattern on the legs in the right place so the legs join up to the beam right where I want them to? With the dowel template still in place, aligned with the holes I just drilled, I put some blue tape across the top and some more tape on the mating surface of the leg. I also added some simple alignment aids here and there. I squirted a little super glue on the tape and set the leg in place making sure it was lined up where I wanted it. After a few seconds the dowel template was now attached to the leg right where I needed it. I marked the holes with a half inch brad point bit, but it had a little trouble getting into this dense wood. Let's talk about drill bits for a second. I bought these brad point bits at a Harbor Freight and I know a lot of people think their stuff is junk. Well, let me tell you my friend, I have never bought a set of drill bits anywhere else where every single bit in the set is absolutely banana sheet. I used a higher quality 3 8 inch bit to do most of the work. Then I finished them up with the half inch bit. Here you can also see that rabbit I mentioned earlier. I did a quick test fit and it all looked great. It was a little tight, so I did not smash it down all the way. I knew I would never be able to separate it if I did. I glued the dowels permanently into the beam and rounded the tops with some sandpaper to make attaching the legs easier. To make the whole bench easier to move, I did not glue on the legs. I bored out the holes a little bit so the legs would sit flat in a friction fit but also come off without having to rent a crane. In this close-up you can see why I elected to stop the pocket area short of the front face and add a matching rabbit on the leg. This way the joint still looks rustic and imperfect. If I came through the front face with the router, then it would leave square edges and straight lines across the front of the bench, which would totally contrast with the rest of the piece. This way the joint still looks in character, quote unquote, but is actually stable and secure. Just to make it easier to assemble the legs on the correct ends and in the right orientation, I added some registration notes. A one on this end and a two on the other end. Here's a fun tip. I cut some small pieces out of a mouse pad and glued them to the bottom of the legs. The grippy side against the floor will keep the bench from sliding around and the squishiness will help it to not wobble since hard floors like tile and wood are rarely perfectly flat. I already mentioned how heavy this thing is so I tethered it to the wall with a couple of eye hooks and some paracord. This bench is the perfect height for a toddler to pull it over on top of themselves and end their day in a splintery mess. Time to autograph this thing and call it done. Thanks for watching, and if you think I've earned it, please like and subscribe. I always read all your comments, so please let me know what you think down below. Thanks, everyone.